So guys, I just got back from MWC 2025 and it was unreal. I also got back to some insane new Wi-Fi access points to unbox. First, I wanna talk about some of the insane things I saw at MWC, including Ubiquiti's own booth there. They displayed some insane racks there, as well as some new unreleased hardware, which I'm sure you guys are gonna be really excited about. I also got some hands-on with the C6 from Mimosa. Now this is basically a non-loss, meaning you don't have to have line of sight between the two devices, a wirelessly communicating bridge. I got to check out these AI glasses, which, well, let's just say translated Chinese into English right in front of my eyes. Oh no, the phone company also shared some massive breakthroughs with their AI. They developed this multi-platform airdrop system, which basically can take a file from uh, on a phone and then transmit that wirelessly to a phone of any other brand. And yes, that includes iOS. Onto the bit I was notably excited about though now, coming across the Unify booth. There's nothing, there's nothing about it online. They've got a 5G modem here, two 5G modem. We need to do a video on it now. I'm not sure if you guys saw the rack that I put together in my my latest vlog, but they had some incredible racks on display at the Ubiquiti booth, which completely put mine to shame. I mean, look at these things. They are a network dream, like heaven for a rack. They had everything on display at the booth, except from their UISP lineup of gear, but they had all of their VoIP phones. The new power amp was there. That thing looks sick. As well as their smart home sensor stuff, the new Superlink, which apparently totes a two kilometer range for the smart sensors. I haven't checked these out yet, but they do look really promising. They also had all of their switching, their current APs and camera lineups. The whole thing just looked really nice. But there was two things that caught my eye specifically. The first being these flat access points and then the second being this Amplify looking device which actually runs Unify and has two SIM card slots on the back of it. Let's talk about it. First, these new APs. Now, these are nowhere to be seen online and you can tell them apart because they are flat compared to the UFO style going out of the current APs. They did look really nice and catch my attention. However, hold your horses because I don't think these are for normal people, for pro shoomers. I think these are more for enterprises. All of them carried the XG notation, which basically for ubiquity means extreme performance and high bandwidth and usually 10G capabilities. I don't think these are going to be cheap, but they're going to come with some really high spec and I think more suited for places of large gatherings like stadiums, office buildings, etc. Now next, the 5G Unify routers. Now I was doing some browsing on YouTube the other day and I came across some comments of people saying ubiquity really need to refresh their 5G lineup of mobile routers. And yes, they've given us a 5G refresh, but not in the mobile router domain. The mobile routers are, as far as I can tell, staying the same. Regardless, 5G for Unify is here in two different flavors. The first is this standalone device that seems to have a tiny little screen on the front of it and a single PoE port on the bottom, as well as a nice little dock so it can sit upright. Now with the Unify setups, ease of setup is a must. So I was told that basically, if you buy this device, you can plug it into any switch port on your Unify network and then it will automatically configure as your 5G modem to bring 5G internet to your Unify system. The great part about this is 5G service is, well, we all know, not really the best. So being able to place this small device in an area in your property or office where you get good 5G reception is a really nice feature. And then have it powered via PoE is just the icing on the cake. And this device had dual SIM slots as well and obviously supports 5G. And you can see some information about the 5G signal displayed on that front screen. This looks really promising. Now this other device is an Amplify style device. It looks like an Amplify Alien in white, but it's not. This thing runs Unify. And on the back, again, two SIM card slots. So you could load in two SIMs, 5G enabled, and have a Unify router here, which is just connected via LTE or 5G. From what I could make out on the show floor, you've got four two and a half gig ethernet ports as well as an SFP under that. And it looks like two of the ports can be remapped to WAN, so possibly you could have your 5G or 4G SIM cards working in tandem with a wired internet connection, as well as, like I say, some two and a half gig LAN ports on the back. And it looks like with that little lightning bolt that the top port can provide PoE. So you could power up, let's say, another access point or a camera or something like that. I'm unsure of what this device can 
can run though. I'm not sure if it can run protect natively. If it can, that would be a game changer. Nevertheless, when I came across the comments of people saying Ubiquiti need to refresh their LTE forward slash 5G lineup, I knew they needed to, but I didn't think they would do it in this way. And to be honest, I'm really excited about it. I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on what you think of this 5G implementation from Ubiquiti. Did you think it would start with their mobile routers and trickle down, or did you think they were going to hit the nail on the head and release the devices that they have? Now, back to those flat access points for a second. You can see that square one on the end. Yes, still very flat. Well, it just so turns out that that one is released, and it sat here on my desk. I was really excited to see this in my house as soon as I got home. This is the Unify Enterprise access point. I think very possibly the most overpowered access point you guys are ever going to see on the channel. I mean, just look at the size of this thing. I thought it was big on the show floor, but it's even bigger in the studio. That thing is heavy. That is a heavy access point and fully metal. Now this thing's got two LAN ports on the bottom for high availability. You've got a 10G and a 1G spare as failover. Both of them can support PoE in. So enough messing around, let's get this new E7 installed in the studio so we can run some tests. So first I need to take down the old access point. We'll get this installed up on the ceiling and then it's as simple as plugging in the ethernet on the back and then twisting this thing onto the bracket onto the ceiling. It's then ready to adopt within Unify. So why would you want three Wi-Fi bands? Why is that so important? Well, let's try and demo it with these two laptops here and click go. Let's say we've got one of them trying to access a NAS on the network and one of them is doing some fairly heavy downloading from Dropbox, for example. Whilst I can do a speed test on my phone on six gigahertz to max out my ISP's line, this really doesn't do the AP any justice. Using these two MacBooks, one connected to five gigahertz and one connected to six gigahertz, you can see here that we're able to pull files from a local NAS at some pretty fast speeds, whilst at the same time running a web-based speed test, which again is running really fast. Now, if we add both of these speeds together, this is called the aggregated speed of this access point. Remember, we're just using the E7 here, no other access point. I should add as well that neither of these laptops support Wi-Fi 7, so the 6 GHz laptop is running on 6E, whilst the 5 GHz laptop is running on the older Wi-Fi 5 respectively. Having this bandwidth shared across two separate devices just goes to show how powerful this AP could be if it was deployed in the right area. Now, as well as that, there was a few other access points that are, let's say, more akin to the prosumer lineup with a much friendlier price point. This is the U7 Lite and the U7 Inwall. Now, this device, the U7 Lite, comes in at $99 for a Wi-Fi 7 access point. Now, I saw a lot of confusion about this online and I'd just like to set the record straight. Wi-Fi 7 is just a standard that also improves on not just five, but 2.4 gigahertz as well. So there's a lot of confusion when this access point was released, missing off the six gigahertz band, but still touting Wi-Fi 7. Again, you can have a Wi-Fi 7 certified access point that just works in both five gigahertz and 2.4. But this is just like any light access point we've seen from Ubiquiti before, just bringing the range up to scratch with the latest standard Wi-Fi 7 in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Now, exactly the same thing can be said about this U7 in-wall, which has a fresh design. Again, no 6 gigahertz network on this one, just 2.4 and 5, but is standardized as Wi-Fi 7. You have PoE in on the back, and then this can sit on a wall, on a faceplate, and then you also have a little two-port switch at the bottom with, yes, one of these ports supplying PoE out for something like a VoIP phone or a camera. Now, I'm yet to test out the capabilities of these two access points, but if you guys would like to see a little bit of a dive into these cheaper access points, let us know down in the comments. But there you guys have it. That's been a little roundup of my trip to MWC and some of the new releases from Ubiquiti. I've got some serious Wi-Fi upgrades to do to this house over the next month or so, so if you're not subscribed, get subscribed now. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. My name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow, and here's a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to help you build a custom website tailored to your specific needs. We use Squarespace to make mmwifi.io, my Wi-Fi company's website, which looks absolutely stunning with all of the animations. Unlock your creative and earning potential with features like Squarespace Payments, which lets you manage your transactions easily and effortlessly in one place. 
enabling you to sell products on your Squarespace website, accepting the major payment methods like Klarna, Apple, and Clearpay. If you're ready to bring your website to life, then you can save 10% on your first Squarespace purchase or domain using code TECHFLOW, or go to squarespace.com forward slash TECHFLOW. We'll have that linked below. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video.